The story of the two disciples who didn't recognize a risen Jesus as he walked with them on the road to Emmaus is found only in the Gospel of Luke, where it's in chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Luke tells the story this way. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their comp companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This story leaves me with questions, starting with how is it that Cleopas and the other disciple didn't recognize Jesus. There's no obvious answer, yet there must have been a reason the story's told that way. Each gospel writer wrestled with how to communicate who Jesus was, which stories to tell, and how to tell them. Everything included in a gospel is there for a purpose which leads to other questions. Why did Luke include this incident in his gospel? What message was he communicating? What did he hope it would accomplish? Why didn't those two recognize Jesus? On the face of it, it makes no sense. But when I started to look for lessons Luke might have been trying to get across, that which made no sense started to make possible sense. 
For instance, logically, those two should have recognized Jesus as soon as he joined them. I suppose they could have been so discouraged and disappointed that they were literally downcast, as in eyes cast down to the ground. But looking at a person who suddenly joins your conversation uh, is pretty automatic. It really doesn't make sense that they didn't see who started walking with them. But that does hold a lesson, almost the way a parable would. Looking down can keep us from looking up. Down is where we look when we're feeling sad, discouraged, hopeless. Jesus is still with us, but we're not apt to recognize his presence. To see hope and possibilities, to recognize new beginnings, we need to look up. That's where we'll be able to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Those two should have recognized Jesus when he started interpreting the scriptures to them. But they didn't. It almost makes sense if this were a lesson about listening. When we put all our energy into trying to wrap our heads around something, we may be leaving our heart out of our listening. We can lose the human connection if we only listen with our head. Sure, Jesus wants us to know him and understand who he is and why he came, all that head stuff. But he also wants us to look for him heart to heart. Two more things happened before the disciples' eyes were opened. The first made the second possible. First, their focus shifted from their issues to his. Instead of talking about their disappointment, instead of soaking up his explanations, they started being concerned about this guy, his decision to keep walking even though the day was coming to a close. That's a significant shift in any conversation, in any relationship. It's a move from self-centered to other-centered. We don't get to know someone if we're always focused on ourself. It's when we listen to them and hear their story that we get to know them and the relationship grows. We don't get to know Jesus if the focus of our life is on us. It's when we focus on him that our relationship with him grows. Inviting Jesus to stay led to him being at the table with them, where Jesus blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to them. That was an action that had a lot of meaning to Jesus' disciples. It brought to mind a shared experience full of deep symbolic significance. And it was in that action that Cleopas and his companion recognized Jesus. When experiences are shared or common ground is found, strangers, even enemies, can connect in a way that would be impossible otherwise, unthinkable. Well, we're able to feel close to Jesus because we have common ground with him. He has shared the ups and downs, joys and griefs of human life. It's an experience we share. And to this day, breaking the bread opens our eyes to see him there with us. 
truthfully, we will never know for sure why Luke included this story in his gospel, why he told it the way he did. But there are certainly lessons we can learn from it, even before I get to the way Luke actually tells this. He says their eyes were kept from recognizing Jesus until he broke the bread, at which point their eyes were opened and they recognized him. On the surface, that raises yet another question. Why would God do that? Close their eyes. What did that accomplish? What purpose did it serve? I can think of one possible answer. And if it's what Luke saw, it may well be the reason he included this incident. The lesson he most hopes his readers, that we will learn from it. You see, God didn't open the eyes of those two disciples until they had invited Jesus into their life. They had sat at his table and accepted his bread, his body. And that's where we all must begin if we want to see Jesus and recognize him for who he is. Our friend and our brother, our risen Lord and our Savior. That's the key. If we want to see Jesus, we have to invite him into our home, our heart, our life.